Amen. Lucia in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm just so happy to see everybody in the new year. If you're with us on Facebook Live, we're thankful for you being a part and being with us during this time of worship. And we're going to look for God just to speak to our hearts as we worship him. Amen. How many know God has a word for us? Amen. And he wants his children to be ahead and in hearing what he's saying in this hour. So we're going to get into his word and we're going to trust that he's going to speak to us and give us a, a fresh word. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. And we thank you, God. We don't take your presence for granted in this place. We thank you for the many hearers, those that are listening to us in this place, those that are listening to us online, and God, and those that are listening all across this nation and across this world. We thank you for what you're going to do in advance. Your word is, is, is faithful to, to fulfill what is sent out to do, and that's to deliver and set free. So, Father, we trust you, God. We say, Howard sits down. God, you stand up. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's get into the word. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to see you today. Okay, come on. Everybody look up at me. Amen. Say, neighbor, it's good to see you today. Amen. Amen. Now turn to that name and say, neighbor, let God lead you in 2019. Let God lead lead you let God lead you how come on up here real quickly you're gonna be my guinea pig let God lead you we talked about this last week about the leading of the Lord and right now he's been leading our church in a time of consecration now let me tell you something there will be never a good time to consecrate are you with me there's never an ideal time to fast and pray amen because people say, well, I'll fast when it's a better time, when I have time. Well, you're never going to have time. There's no better time than the present. Amen? So real quickly, we, if, you, can, if you don't mind me using you today, I didn't get a chance to talk to you beforehand. And if so, it's too late, huh? I've already started wrapping you up. Everybody say, let God lead you. And I'm going to try to do a nice little bow up here. Can you see anything? Nope. Okay. So, we we're talking about the leading of the Lord. If you let go, what do you do? You stop. You don't keep walking, right, when God lets you go, right? You stay still, amen? So, we're talking about letting God lead you. You mean to understand that God's going to lead you in different parts and places and valleys. Come on, don't, don't pull back. Come on. Come on. <laughs> let God, everybody say, let God lead you. Let God. Right? We got a stage up here. How many is important to follow now, if I'm, if I'm playing the Father God, and he's playing the, the Christian believer, and he's following, amen? And you know, at times, he's been close to this ledge, right? Yeah. Right? But guess what? God is what? You wouldn't be saying that. He starts slowing down. <laughs> Those are, amen? Just follow my leading, amen? amen? Everybody say, let God lead you. Let God lead you. Amen. Let God lead you. Say, let God lead you. Let God Stop right there. Let God lead you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How did you feel when you were being led? I know it's out there. So. Right. Yeah. So what? Did, was it scary at first? At first, yeah, it was uncomfortable. It was what? Say it loud. Uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. What's another adjective to describe how you felt? You said you didn't know what was out there. Yeah. You, you were ignorant of what was there. Okay. How what else? Fearful. Oh, fearful? What were, you, what were you scared of? <laughs> I couldn't see anything. I wasn't sure. You, you, you couldn't see anything? You weren't sure? Okay, okay. Anything else? Okay, so as you started walking, did you start getting... How did, yeah, yeah, I began to trust more. As you started walking, you began to trust more. Okay, okay. Anything else? As you began walking and as I was pulling you in different directions, how did that feel to be pulled in different directions? first it was uncomfortable but then after that I was I was able to be comfortable in it because I knew you're gonna lead me in the right direction okay say man I need to get that on mic that was very good say that again I said at first I was very uncomfortable but then as we were going along the path I was able to grow comfortable with it because I knew he was gonna lead me in the right direction yeah. 
even when I said, how do you feel when I said I'm kneeling near the edge of the stage? How to, I, got, I got nervous momentarily, but then I was like, he's not going to just let me fall off. So okay. <laughs> I, had to, <laughs> I had to hold her back. Yeah. <laughs> So at first, if he, he, he admits he started pulling back. Like when I mentioned the stage, he started pulling back and said, come on now, just trust me. Then he let go and he kept on going. And don't we do that with God sometimes? When we get into those, those, those scary places, we start pulling back because we may have never been there before. But here's the thing that I want you to realize. God has you and he's not going to let you go. You said you, you, you said you had to trust that I wasn't going to lead you in the wrong direction. Say, say what you said. And, yeah, I, I simply just had to trust that he wasn't going to lead me to like a place of error, a place of failure. I had to trust that he was leading me in the right path and in, in, in the right direction. And not lead you off the stage. Yeah, not lead me off the stage <laughs> into some pain. So. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for that. Give him a hand clap. Amen. 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 Thank you for that impromptu. When you have impromptu, you never know how that's going to come out. Amen? So thank you for being great with that. Amen? So turn to your name and say, neighbor, let God lead you. Amen. Now let God lead you in this fast. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Verse 1. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Again, there'll never be an opportune time to fast. Or seek the Lord. Are you with me? Never an opportune time. Even if you plan it a month, a year in advance, it's never, it's never, you have to just trust God in the midst of what you're going through. Amen? When you got it, say amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Let's read these words. It says what? Arise, shine for the light has come. Let's start that again. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory has risen upon who? You. That's every so turn to somebody and say, that's me. that's me. Amen. Second verse, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and thick, thick darkness the people, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. How many know so much to be praying for? It's a lot of darkness on the earth. A lot of darkness on the earth. Third verse says, And the nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Full verse, lift up your eyes all around and see that all together they come to your sons shall come from afar. So, but it says in the second word, Behold, there is darkness come to earth. You understand, people are, are, are allowing their kids to change their sexuality at ages 10 and 9 and 8 now. 11 and 12, I wake up and say, I don't feel like I'm a boy anymore. I don't feel like I'm a girl anymore. Darkness, I'm talking about darkness. Are you with me? Yeah. I was watching this special on R. Kelly, the documentary. Seeing all the pedophilia and yet still people are still supporting this person. And all of his obscenity is and lewdness. I just had to go and take him off all of my playlists. Step in the name of love. Yes, I had step in the name of love. I step in the name of love. But not anymore. I had to step on out of that. I took that thing off my, I deleted from my library. Amen? Because I wasn't aware of that, all this, the craziness that this man was doing. And so when you know better, and right here in Atlanta, Right here, right here in Alpharetta. Yeah, we, you know, he's right here stepping in the name of love right up here. On the name of lust. Are you with me? Just perversion. And I tell you, boy, you better be glad I'm saved because, man, them dads are too calm for me. See, somebody left their manhood somewhere. I'm, I told my kids, I told I had to get, call my girls in. I said, boy, if anybody ever, mm, Lord, y'all be seeing pastor in jail somewhere. I tell you, <laughs> he wouldn't do that no more. Amen? Yeah. I don't understand that stuff. No, you don't mess with those innocent young girls. Ah, oh, I don't understand that. I don't see why, where the outrage. God help us, Lord. 
There's, what am I talking about? There's darkness on the earth. Are you with me? You got priests touching kids and pastors touching kids and youth pastors. Uh, you were right in this city. You have, you, have, you, have, you, you have leaders going being put in the church that, that lifestyle does not even agree with the word of God. There's no accountability. Help us, Lord. I understand, I understand grace and I understand the love of God. But I mean, no, if you're not living right, you need to sit down. Amen. If you ain't striving to live right, amen. If you got one foot in God and one foot in adultery, you need to go and sit your butt down. Amen. amen. Shouldn't be practicing it. God help us. Mm-hmm. And when you try to call people into accountability, people look at you like you're crazy. Mm-hmm. We're moved in our nation away from truth. How many know you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free? Say that with me. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And that lets you know if you stay in a lie, you can never be set free. Are y'all with me? Do you understand why the enemy wants to keep you in a lie? Why he wants to keep you bound? Nah, you gotta, we gotta, we gotta let that go, amen? Amen. Understand this, as we are consecrating, you're birthing things. What am I talking about? Consecrating prayer, fasting, and giving. Say it with me. Prayer, fasting, and giving. Let's say it for me. Prayer, fasting, and giving. Not just one, not just giving, not just fasting, not just prayer. All three together is a sucker punch that knocks the devil out every time. And I don't know about you, I'm going for a knockout. I want to put the devil in intensive care with no way of recovery when it comes to my life and my family. Are y'all with me? I don't want to play with him, amen? I want to start this year out right, amen? Praying for my, every one of my children. I'm praying for the spouses. I'm praying for godly spouses. Godly life partners. That they won't have to mix and match. Are y'all with me? I'm praying for godly careers. Godly connections. Things that they don't have to make in themselves. That God just does. And I'm praying that they get a personal revelation of who God is. I'm not only praying that for them, I'm praying that for myself. Yes. Amen. I really believe people fall wayward when they forget who God is. They start thinking that this world is it. And I'm telling you, there's more to life than this world. Amen. Yes. See, when you see folk doing crazy stuff, touching young girls and touching young boys and all type of stuff like that, it lets you know somewhere you got caught up in this world. Turn in as a neighbor. There's more to life than this world. There's something called eternity. Amen. You better get a revelation of eternity. That's much longer than the, the 80 or 90 or 100 years that God gives you down, down here. Amen. I'm telling you that this time goes like 50 years. Bam. Goes like. So why are you tripping? Oh, God, help us. Lord, help us to number our days that we would lean toward wisdom. Amen? Amen. Let's look at how we need to let God lead us in 2019 as we go through this year. How many are excited about 2019? I know you I'm excited. I believe God spoke to me, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Amen? He's going to take us at a whole nother level. And I'm, I'm excited about what he's going to do. Amen? Amen? First thing we got to do is we got to put the past behind you. Yeah. Turn to the neighbor and say, put the past behind you. Past behind you. Amen. You got to release, forgive, and increase. Don't be trying to fast. You ain't released anybody. Don't be trying to fast in unforgiveness. 
You got to release. You got to set the, and I'm telling you, no first two to three days will work that out of you. Oh, I want to forgive. Keep fasting. Are you with me? Because you won't feel any strength until you start releasing people and letting them go. Well, you don't know what my, your, my ex did to me. Well, I, I know what God can do. Amen. 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 Yeah. You don't know how that person hurt me. Well, I know what God can do. You don't know what my dad, he never was there for me. My mom, she wasn't that much better either. Well, I know what God can do. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Put the past behind you. Release, forgive, and then increase. Secondly, prioritize his, capital H, talking about God, Jesus, cap, prioritize his direction for your life. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, all his rights, everything we had. Priority, prioritize him. Put first things first. Get your house in order. And I'm talking about your spiritual house first. Your prayer time. When you wake up in the morning, just take five minutes to worship God before you just start getting your day and start complaining about stuff. Some of us, we, we live in worry. We thrive in worry. It's learned bad behavior. Say, not anymore. Amen. You guys, why? Because you, you serving the devil notice today. I will no longer live in worry. Why don't you try to wake up and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for breath in my body, God. Thank you for cold oatmeal. Thank you for what you're doing. Amen. I'm just saying something you can complain about. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my house. Thank you for, for my having my right mind. I, see, the older I get, I understand. I used to hear the old folk get up and say, Lord, I'm here and I'm blessed to be in my right mind. Yeah. You understand? Somebody woke up in Grady this morning and they didn't know who they were. See, I'm a chaplain with Wellstar and I've seen folk that don't even know who they are and, and what, or what well, how, where, am I, where am I? How I get here? They're not in their what? Right mind. Prioritize his direction. God, which way do you want me to go? I'll go. Yes, I have this desire, but God, where are you trying to take me? Let me tell you something. You follow God's direction. Guess what? He always leads you in what's best for you. Are you with me? Even if you have to sacrifice what you want at first. Because sometimes if you just sacrifice just a little bit, he'll, he'll lead you into your passion. Thirdly. Pursue his vision for your life. Pursue his vision for your life. Notice that his is capital H, not yours, but his. What's the vision that God has for your life? Pursue it. And fourthly, become passionate for souls. Become passionate for souls. Amen. Everything that God is doing on inside of you is so that you can reach others for Christ. Don't take that for granted. Amen. Put the past behind you. Release, forgive, increase. Prioritize his direction. Make him a first priority in your life. Put God, then family. Amen. Put God, then children. Amen. Let me tell you something. Parents, Put God in your marriage. You can't love each other if, if, if God ain't first. I can't love Pastor T like I need to love her if God's not first in my life. Amen? I can't love my kids like I need to love them if God ain't first in my life. When I'm not right with God, man, I'm an unhappy camper. And I, 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 would, I, would, I would wage to think the same way with you. When you're not right with God, you are an unhappy camper. Things just don't fall in line. So you have to begin to take time to, to, to prioritize God and get that alone time with the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second, are y'all getting something out of this? I have a few more moments with you. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Familiar scripture, we know it. We can quote it. Some of us don't even need to look at it. We got it down pat, amen? It says, if my people, which are called by my name, and Amplified says, and my people, but the King James says, if my people who are called by my name, who's, who's my people? 
me, we, us. Uh. If my people which are called by my name do what? Humble themselves and pray and seek. And I'm in the Amplified Version, so it says, crave. We cry as a necessity. My face, my wisdom, my counsel. We don't want just his hands. That's the blessing. We want his counsel. We want his heart. Amen? And turn from their wicked ways. See, when you, when you have God's counsel, you understand, say, it's one thing to say, if my, if my children just want me to give them the keys to the car. But it's the other thing when they want me to ride with them in the car. So, Dad, I don't want just the keys. I want you to ride with me. I want to go somewhere together with you. Are you with me? Then he will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified and set apart for me my purpose. This house, everybody say, this house has been sanctified for the Lord. Point to yourself, say, this house has been sanctified for the Lord. So you're thinking about the church, I'm thinking about you. Because if this house ain't sanctified, then guess what? Then this house won't be sanctified. If this house, personal house, is not sanctified, then the family won't be sanctified. And if the family's not sanctified, then the church won't be sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Set apart. Fit for the master's use. Amen? And it says, and my name may be here forever, and my eyes and my heart will be here perpetually. Amen? See, prayer and fasting is the labor and delivery room for your vision to come to fruition. Let me say that again. Prayer and fasting is the labor. How many know what labor is, ladies? I remember with the first child, my wife was in a minimum of eight hours. Amen. I think with, with the second one, four to six, six hours. And it went down each one, four. Amen. And then with the other one was like two. It was quick. Are you with me? But prayer and fasting. Was the labor rough, you all? Any ladies that went through it, was labor, was it rough? That's why they call it labor. It means work. And guess what? Prayer and fasting, is it tough? Yeah. yeah. That's why it's called what? Work. It's the highest work you can do for the kingdom. The highest work. Prayer and fasting is the labor and delivery room for your vision to come to fruition. And I'm telling you something. Hey, it may be rough work in that labor room, but when that delivery comes, it makes it all worth it. Are you with me? I would see that smile come on my wife's face after that baby was in her arms. Amen? Just remember, you don't even, oh man, I don't even remember. We're talking about, hey, you ready for another one? Amen? I'm just messing. Amen? I went from preaching to meddling. Amen? And I said, prayer and fasting is the labor and delivery room for your vision to come to fruition. Psalm 42. Psalm 42, turn there. Highlight these scriptures. These are scriptures, these are words that should keep you. One of my favorite ones. Psalm 42 and 1. As the, pa as the deer pants longingly for the water brooks, so my soul pants longingly for you, O God. Let me tell you something. If your soul ain't panting for God, ask God to give you your pain back. Don't be ashamed to do that. Don't be ashamed to ask God for passion. Do you understand you seek him with the passion that he gives you? It's really not you. See, that's why there's no reason to, to even get in pride. <laughs> because it's not like you're seeking him with something that you got. You're seeking him with what he gave you. He puts the seeker on inside of you. Are you with me? So when you find yourself getting weary for the journey, say, Lord, give me some passion. Yeah. Are you with me? For him. 
Now, that's in every area of life. See, it starts with your relationship with Christ, but then it starts for your marriage too. When you find yourself getting worried in your relationship, Lord, give me some passion. Parents, when you find yourself getting weary in parenting. Now, I'm not talking about this thing where you just give them the video game control. That ain't parenting. I'm not talking about where you just give them some Netflix and you just go chill in a room. I'm talking about when you're parenting. When you're setting up boundaries and incentives for your child, and you're thinking long term, and you're saying the, 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 the dirty word, no, and meaning it. You're not trying to be their best buddy. Because you understand there's long term ramifications, and God has given you an assignment as a parent, whether double, whether single, God has given you an assignment, whether blended or whether. Uh, 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 Organic. God is giving you a assignment to impart in those children everything that they need for life. And that part of those needs are boundaries. There's yeses and there's noes, but it can't be yes all the time. Something wrong if it's yes all the time. Something wrong if one parent has to be the bad guy all the time. Don't you just hate that? You like, no, you can't do it. Oh, maybe. Just don't tell them. Are you, are you that parent that just don't tell them parent? Oh, don't, hey, don't look at nobody. Everybody look for it. Look for it. Look for it. I don't want to get you in trouble. Are you that just don't tell it? Just, okay, we're going to do this. Just don't let daddy know. Don't let mommy know. Undermine the whole system. And when that child grows up, is always looking for a way out, and you're wondering why. All because you wanted to be the favorite. Childish, but true. Are you with me? How many takes it takes? It takes a little. It, ta- it takes some integrity to hold the line. Amen, life, bub. It got real quiet up in here. Amen. Facebook, it got quiet out there too. Amen. But it takes it takes integrity to hold the line. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen? My soul, my life, second verse. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. See, when you're really thirsting for God with your inner self, you're saying, Lord, let me decrease and you must increase inside of me. That means, yes, it's not my way, but your way, God. In my marriage, not my way. How many of them in marriage, you can't be about always getting your way? Amen. If you think it's all about your way, you're in the wrong institution. Are you with me? How many of them in a family, it's not about always getting your way? Talk to me now. In a family, is it about, it's not always about getting your way. How about in a blended family, how many know it's not about getting your way? It has to be, in a family, there has to be compromise. in order for it to work, amen? And I'm not talking about compromising of the truth of God, I'm talking about working together, compromising of wills, so that his will can be seen in our lives. He goes on to say, when will I come to see the face of God? See, David wasn't concerned about the hands, the hands represent the blessing. He wanted the face. He wanted God's understanding. He wanted God's counsel. He wanted God's wisdom. That's all found in the face. So you can have his hands all day, but I want the face, bless the Lord my soul, forget not his benefits. We heal my, he talks about how Moses in, in Psalms 103, how Moses went after the face of God, but the people just wanted the blessings of God. I don't want to be like the all normal people. I want God's face. I want his understanding. I want his wisdom. I want to have his, his discernment to know what he's doing behind the scenes when I'm going through crisis. I want to have that eagle watch. Not that pigeon walk. Are you with me? I want to soar. Fifth verse says, my, why are you in despair, O oh my soul, and why have you become restless and disturbed within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Amen? Now let's look at this. Look at, let's look at biblical fasting. Biblical fasting 
is abstaining, is deliberate. Everybody say deliberately. That means you have to make a deliberate decision to fast. Abstaining from food for a specific period of time for the purpose of communication and a deeper relationship with the Lord. Amen. How many need a deeper relationship with the Lord? Raise your hand. Amen. So I turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to go deeper then. It's time to go deeper. Amen. During this fast, make sure that you're taking time to spend time with the Lord. Amen? A de deliberately abstaining from food for a specific period of time for the purpose of communication and a deeper relationship with the Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm in the Amplified Version. I want to make sure you get this word in your knower and get understanding of what God is saying. It's the Beatitudes. To me, this is the code of the kingdom. Every kingdom has a code, has an ethic system. Jesus lays this out. It's written in red in your Bibles because Jesus was laying out, if you want to excel in the kingdom, you need to understand my ethics, my, my ethics code, my policy manual. And he gives us the Beatitudes, as some call it. He said, blessed, sixth verse, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those now, if, if you're going to get joyful, nourished by God's goodness, it doesn't seem like it's something you want to do. It says, are those who what? Hunger and thirst for wickedness. No, for righteousness. Not wickedness, for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely what? Satisfied. Let's say discontent. Say satisfied. Yeah. Seven verse. Blessed, content, sheltered by God's promise. How many want to be content and sheltered by God's promise? Just want to take a poll real quickly. Are the what? Merciful, for they will what? Receive mercy. Pastor T talked about on New Year's Eve about building up that mercy account. What level? What's the balance on your mercy account right now? When's the last time you've given somebody the benefit of the doubt when they didn't deserve it? See, that's what mercy is. It's funny, the, the longer I live, the more I appreciate mercy. When I was younger, it was judgment, 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 come quickly. God's gonna get you. He's gonna get you fast, and if he don't get you, I'm gonna get you with my tongue. Are you with me? But the longer I live, I learn to appreciate mercy. And mercy lets you understand you don't deserve anything that you have. You deserve death. But God's giving you mercy. You say, well, we're the righteous of God. Christ is in my life, but you still have filthy rags. Even in all your righteousness, you're still in filthy rags. So does it give you compassion? Can't that give you compassion for somebody that's lost? Can't that give you compassion for somebody that's lost in the house? Praying for all those people that are around R. Kelly. See, I was praying for them and praying for him because I see a lost young man, a lost little boy that was molested when he was young. See, hurt people hurt people, but change people change. You got to get some help for these people. You see, it's, it's so many people out there hurting people right now, and raping and molesting folk. Three out of five children are molested and hurt. And if you don't get hurt for these people, they're going to become perpetuators even in prison. So you have to get some deliverance and deliverance through the word of God. God has to heal their broken heart. A first blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature. Don't you want to be spiritually mature? Don't you want to be anticipating God's presence? That means you know when you have an expectancy for him to come. Are the pure in heart for those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, they will see God. There's that integrity again. There's that moral, cor moral courage and godly character. And ninth verse, are you ready for it? Blessed, spiritually calm, with life, joy, and God's favor are the makers and maintainers. See, you don't just maintain it, but you will make it. Makers and maintainers, M&M. And, &M. and I'm not talking about a candy, but how many know it's sweet when it comes in your house? 
makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're called to make and maintain peace. Amen. He called to keep the peace. Reasons why we should fast. Well, the number one reason we should fast is one, is because Jesus did it. And Jesus is our example. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had gone without food, and notice he was led by the Spirit. Amen. How many know he got tempted on his fast? So if he got tempted on his fast, do you think you might get tempted on yours? Yeah. Amen. You're going to find out in those first weeks, all mess is going to be coming out of you. First couple days, my first two, three days, you just see anger, attitudes. Now, if you start to fast and it's your first time fast, I want to encourage you. Some people stop after that because they get discouraged. No, let the mess come out so God can fill you up with something else. Amen? Now, what you need to do is when you get in prayer and God begin to show you those wrong attitudes, how you snapped on your spouse, how you snapped on your children, guess what? You need to repent before God for that. You need to say, I'm sorry. Everybody try to say, I'm sorry. You say, I'm sorry, God. Now, after you do that, then you need to go back to those individuals. And say, I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry again. I'm sorry. Amen. Don't just leave with God. Well, I got right with God. That's all that matters. No. Go back and humble that flesh and go back and apologize to those kids and apologize to, to that spouse and let them know you appreciate them. Are you with me? So notice after 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. And the Tim, how many know you get hungry on the fast sometimes? How many know you get you feel weak at times? Anybody feel weak? That's all part of it. Amen. You see, you're learning how to 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 how to eat to live instead of living to eat. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus replied, It is written. Now notice he answers the enemy with the word of God. It is written forever and ever remains written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word of God. Everybody say the word. The word. The word. The word. The word is what breaks yokes. Amen? You have to begin to apply the word in your life. You got to learn how to prophesy the word to your own life. Amen? I'm going to end here. As I deal with the effects of fasting. Two things fasting does. But it's a key factor that you got to remember as you go through it. Fasting weakens the flesh and strengthens the spirit. Everybody say it weakens the flesh and strengthens the spirit. Amen. Fasting weakens the flesh and strengthens the spirit. How many want a strong spirit? Well, welcome to the fast. Amen? See, our relationship with God is more important than food and the things of this world. Let me give, let me give you this last thing. On when should I fast? That's what we're in on this. When should I fast? You should fast for discernment. What's discernment? Talk to me. What's discernment? Be able to see different things. What? What? A, you're right. You're seeing what's right or wrong. The sermon deals with decision making. It deals with understanding, judgment. Judges need discernment. Parents need discernment. Managers and business owners, you need discernment. How many? If you can't discern what's happening in your business or in your career in your field, you can make the wrong decision and miss great opportunities. How many know believers need discernment? How many know parents need discernment? You need to be able to know when your children are telling the truth and lying to you. Are you with me? 
Well, he said, what's the danger of that? When a child can lie to you and you not catch it, they start thinking they're getting away. Are you with me? And so you can do all the investigation you want in the natural, or you can just get on your knees and God will show you. There's times I've been praying and God said, they just lied to you. So what, Lord? I moved on. Lord said, no, they just lied. You need to get that right. You, then you go back and let them know God showed you that you, that you lied to me. Are y'all with me? Discernment. Guidance. How many need guidance by God? Don't you need God to order your steps in your career and business decisions in your relationships? Amen. Some of you are waiting for your Boaz. That means your godly mate. And you keep messing with bozos. Bozo's a clown. It can be a female clown or girl. Amen? Say, neighbor, stop messing with the bozos. So you can get your bow ass. Amen? Guidance and blessing. Don't you need God's blessing? How many of you need to seek God when you have to make major decisions? How many in the beginning of the year you have major decisions that you need to make? Yeah. That can change the very direction of your life. Yeah. Are you with me? When we, have, when we are making major decisions about our family, we pray and fast. We don't wait for the church to do it. We do that as a family, as a, marriage, as a married couple. Amen? Thirdly, when the Holy Spirit prompts. I don't know the Holy Spirit to just prompt you. He won't even tell you why. I just said you need to fast. Because he, how many of the Holy Spirit knows what you're going to have to deal with in that day? Amen? And you have to be obedient to the Lord. Amen? How many of you fast when you have family challenges? Some things you can't talk away. Some things you can't even spank away. Some things you got to Fast. And God has to show you what you're dealing with. So not what spirit you're dealing with in the household. Because a lot of us, we will start ministering to our families out of fear. And God says, no, 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 that's, that's, that's from the, the now. Well, I'm worried that they're going to this. And I'm worried about this. I'm worried. And God says, don't worry. You need to be strong right now. They need a firm hand in this area. Stop. God doesn't move in worry. Get me. I want you to understand this. God doesn't move in worry. He moves in courage. Are you with me? You have to be courageous to make the tough decisions. Are you with me? And if God is showing you something, there's no need to fear. If God is showing you that your child's emotions are fragile right now, that means you know how to pray for the emotions. You know, oh, I'm just worried. They're so fragile. They're so, so you start speaking that they're fragile. They're so weak right now. They're so weak. They're weak, weak, weak. And then you wonder why they're weak. Are you with me? But if you say, you know what, they're weak, but Lord, I'm praying for your strength on them because when they're weak, that's when you're strong. Cover them, Lord. You've got to, you seen the hurts they had to go on through their life. Now heal them, God. And then you get up and you say, you know, you're strong. You don't go say you're weak. Oh, you're so weak, weak, weak. You say you're strong. Because yeah. if you get up and say you're weak, then you're negating what you just prayed. God gave you discernment so that you could see the problem and you could address it and you can cap it off and get and cut it at the root so that God can bring deliverance to that child. Now, you, you, can do, you, can, you can learn how to do that in prayer, or you can go pay $100 an hour for a therapist to teach you that. And now they don't even want to talk to you in therapy. They just want to give you some medicine. Are you with me? You ain't paying me for this. I'm giving you this. Is, this, is, this is a nugget of truth right here. If he just asked for God to give you discernment, if, you, if parents, if you just pray and say, Lord, while you're fasting and praying, give me the key to this child's heart. So I can unlock them into their potential. Yeah. Got to do it. Yeah. You don't do it. Problem is you've been trying to do it in yourself. You can throw money at it. How many know money won't fix the problem? You see, money just causes more rebellion. 
Because then the kid will start despising that you're just giving and giving and giving, but you ain't giving them what they need. Are y'all with me? Discernment, family challenges, that's when you fast. It awakens your spirituality to hear God's voice and his will. Sometimes God will say, you know what? How many know when you listen to God, you don't always treat every child fairly? Oh, you don't want to hear that. How many know sometimes God has special callings on different children? And he'll say, do this for this one for this season. Well, I'm not doing nothing for this one right now. God says their season's coming. But right now I want you to focus on this one. And then when I tell you to focus on that one, focus on that one. But sometimes, we, you know, we got to make this thing fair. I gave you this. I got to give you this. This one doesn't even need that right now. This one is not even at a point of development where they need that. But you're just trying to be fair like the world is. Got to be fair. Forget what God says. God said, you're about to lose this one right now. You need to give them all your attention to bring them back. But I got to be fair. I gave, okay, get off of me now. I need this one. God, say, Lord, give me discernment. Amen. Anybody tell you, even if you're a busy teacher in the house, whenever you're teaching, you can't give every child. You got to find out who needs what you, needs the most. And you meet that need. And they will help empower the others to get right. You got to see that. Lord, what's the key? So many people are striving to be fair. And then people, then the kids, you know, you see it in, in, in the community when you teach. You see, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Life is not always fair, but it's just. Well, you gave him that, and you didn't give me this. You didn't need it. You gave him a pencil. You didn't give me a pencil. You have three pencils. But you gave him one. I always thought you'd give him one. You need to give me one, too. You have three pencils on your desk. You understand? You, uh, now I'm, I'm trying to simplify it so you can understand, but that's what you encounter in our school systems now, that type of mindset. And it's coming from parenting. Somebody just yelled out, manager from, and it worked. You see it in adults now. So fair, everything got to be fair. You don't even need that. Fifthly, when you need wisdom or financial blessing. How many know that's when you should fast? When you need breakthrough, amen? And sixthly, I'm trying to really end. When you need favor and help in your life and home. Amen? Stand to your feet, everybody. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now. Just raise your hands as a sign of surrender, wherever you are in your walk right now. I think we all can agree that we need more of him. And if you haven't got to that point yet, just keep living. (laughs) This thing called parenting, this thing called husband and wife, this thing called just being a Christian is not easy. Being single. And having a godly standard, it's not easy. Waiting for a godly life part, it's not easy. Following in his leading in business and in your career, it's not easy. But God, you're there to help us. You promise us the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to guide us and to, and to guide us into all truth. So, Father, we yield ourselves to you right now with upraised hands. We say, God, we're surrendered to you. Holy Spirit, fill us right now with your strength. God, fill us with your your spirit and and your empowerment and your anointing to do what you've called us to do. Move us beyond goosebumps. Move us beyond the feeling, God, and take us into obedience of your will. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints, if you believe in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now praise him like you received something from him. Hallelujah, God.